Hello and welcome back. In a previous video, um, we looked at how Doctopus really works and looks from both the uh, teacher view and from the student view. Okay, notice we have two additional fields that are not yet populated. So these fields will update uh, to do with things like how many revisions the student has made, um, comments, etc. And that will up by doing an update, I can get updated information on that. I don't really have to count them or do it myself. But the grade and the written feedback are one option for getting information to students. Now we're going to look at Gubrick in a few minutes, and that's the more advanced option. But were you to choose not to use that, you could simply type in a grade and say, uh, put in a comment. And then in order to get this information out to this student, or out to all the students, we're going to assume that I've completed it, I am going to, as a matter of fact, let's assume I'm not completing it. So I can use this drop down to exclude these other students. And in this way, I'll only be sending it to the one that I've, I've graded. So I'm going to go to Doctopus and I'll go to the main menu screen, send feedback and email. And you can see that among the variables I have up at top are grade and written feedback. So you can just write your message down uh, in the lower portion. Okay, so I just paused and, and so you didn't have to watch me type out some things. So um, I gave them a sentence and I want to give them the grade and I'm just going to put grade here for my uh, to document it more or less. But if I want them to get the actual grade, I'm going to have to do the dollar sign G-R-A-D-E. I also gave them a spot where they could get my comments. And that is written feedback. And perhaps I shouldn't use the term comments because it's uh, going to be confused with Google comments. Um, but there you go. I'm going to have to put your teacher. I can, I can put my own name in here as well. Okay. And send that email. It seems to be done. I'll go to the student view. I'll come to their mailbox. And um, there you go, there's feedback. And the first thing I see has, oh, has something to do with uh, that first email I sent. But if I scroll down, you can see as part of the, uh, as part of the thread of emails, here it is. So there's the grade, there's my name, here's the, here are the comments. Okay, fantastic. Let me close that up a second for the student. Now, back on the teacher side, that is wonderful. Okay, so I can do it that way. It's just a quick, simple way to do it and feed them some uh, feedback. But there's also something called a rubric. And a rubric is just a rubric. So let's see how that works. You're going to click on rubric. Um, while I'm waiting for that to load, you'll notice that the message up at top tells them, tells you, that if you want students to be able to peer assess, give each other feedback on their work, that they are going to have to install Gubrick as well. So they would have to go into their Google accounts and um, do that here okay, with this link. But if the only feedback I want them to have is my feedback, then, then I can do it simply through this screen without having them install anything. There is also a link to help. So it's going to give you some information on Gubrick's right here. And that seems to be taking quite a long time. I'm just going to go to my drive and I can make a new Gubrick. So I can either select one from here or I can make a new one from a copy of an existing one. So that's fine. But what we really need to start out with is a rubric. Okay, so I've got to at least select the first one or have one to copy. So let's come over to my drive and work on making that before I continue. 
So here we are. Um, I've got a bunch of files in here. I don't seem to have a rubric. I think I'm going to put my rubric. I can put it. I can put it anywhere I want. I can put it inside my roster folder up here. I can put it inside my teacher folder. Maybe I'll do that. So I'm just going to make a new Google Sheet. And the thing to know about making um, a rubric for this is that cell A1 must be blank. And the rest of it really follows along pretty much a standard rubric design. So um, organization um, content presentation. I'll just leave it at that and pause the video for a second. I'll make a very quick rubric here. Okay, so this is a very poor example of a rubric, but it's a rubric nonetheless. I'm going to give it a title. And now it is saved in my Google Drive. I'll just close it. Select it. And there you go. I have a few options here. Uh, make rubric viewable to students, which I almost always want to do. I think I always, always do want to do that. Allow self or peer assessment. So as I said, if, if I want to allow them to self or peer assess, I'm going to have to have them go to this link uh, from within their Google Drive and install that in their space so that they can use it. And I think that's a great option, even if you don't want to allow peer assessment, you can allow self-assessment. So it's a good idea to have students go through and, and evaluate their own work. But for now, I'll shut it off. And then to send email notifications to students. I can have that done automatically here. Or if I uncheck it, you know, I'd have to manage that communication independently. So let's attach that rubric. You can see it's now going through my different students and it's attaching that one at a time. If they were co-teachers, it would be, you know, informing them, giving them access as well. Okay, some of my menu items change now. I have a display average scores option. If I choose that at this point, You can see that I have extra categories. Okay, so um, these are the different categories of the rubric, count, etc. So we'll we'll see how that works now. The other the other options are pretty much the same. And here's a link, an additional category on this side, to the rubric. Okay, so previous, I always had a link to the document itself, but that's not how I want to assess it. I want to go into the link to the Gubrick. And that will open up a window that's broken into several frames. Uh, the top being where you can actually grade the, the essay or the assignment. The bottom being a scrolling window that contains the assignment. So I'm going to look at this. And I'm going to say the organization is uh, fair. The content, well, that doesn't look very good. The content was poor. And the presentation was good, say. Now, if it falls somewhere between good and fair, you can simply change this number to edit it to anything you want, really, or anything at least that's within it the reasonable range here. So I'm going to say that's 2.5. And when I do that, it's going to highlight both good and fair to show that it's got elements of each. Now, if I said 2.99, the same thing would happen. It's only when I get to 3 exactly that this um, shading goes away for the lower category. Okay, there's an auto advance on submit option. 
which means if I check this and submit, I'm putting in my assessment for this particular user and it will take me to the next user. This allows me to change students from can view to can comment on submit. So in other words, if I want to get some feedback directly, right now they can only view, but if I want to allow them to add comments directly um, to that paper again, or to that assignment again, I can leave that checked. Also automatic email of scores to this particular user. And again, when I'm working here, I'm working on this user. So if I submit, I'm really submitting for this particular uh, student. I can use the drop down to jump to the next student. It's going to load their version of the document along with a rubric. And if I return, the comments and assessments, everything I've done still exists for the first student. So I don't have to submit before I leave, but I do want to submit before I um, log out. It would be best to do that. Okay, comments. Um, Okay, I can always come back and edit this later, but let's try to get it right now. One more option exists. Now, if I want to, I can click this microphone and I can create an audio file. So I can actually give them um, audio feedback, record my own voice and send that back. Let's see how that works. Okay, I didn't think this was your best effort. A lot of these words don't even make sense. You neglected to delete the directions at the top, as was clearly stated. And I'd really like to conference with you about this personally so we can uh, see how we might improve this in the future. Some other options you may have. Okay, clicking this stop button up at the top is causing it to convert to an MP3 and to upload into MySpace. So it's an audio file um, that's being placed in MySpace in Google Drive. If I wanted to stop and collect my thoughts, I could have used that other button to pause it and then restart it. Now, if I don't want it, if I decide it was a bad idea or I want to do it over again, I can trash it right here. Or I can simply upload it now to my Google Drive space and it will do all the appropriate sharing so that they have access to it. See, so these audio comments are, are going to be attached to my email when I send it. So let me submit this. We'll take a second or two. And now it's auto advanced me to the next user because I had that checkbox checked. Okay, if I come back, you can see um, I now have a third email in my uh, box and it's right here, rubric assessment. And when I open this up as a student, I am going to get um, the rubric. I am going to get the audio file link and of course any comments that were included. Now if that student were to, let's see, to revisit the assignment itself, you'll notice that the uh, rubric was embedded at the bottom of it. The only thing I don't care for here is I, I, I think it would have been nice if it added a couple of blank lines or something or some type of visual break before it embedded this rubric at the bottom, but it doesn't do that. Uh, otherwise, great. You know, it gives them their score for each strand of the rubric. It shows them, you know, there's a 299, so that's important considering the fact that I didn't give them either a 2 or a 3. And now because we've enabled it, the user here can um, can add additional comments of their own. They can respond to comments. And we, we can continue this dialogue if, I've, if I set it to do so. Just a few last notes. This grade and written feedback, I can delete those because those don't really have anything to do with the rubric. I can see that it's up dated the information here, and if I do another assessment, this count is going to increase to show that it was assessed multiple times. I've done that here, so the count is now 2, 
the changes have been made in the most recent copy stored.